Hello and welcome back to a second season of Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host and voice of Fighting Tiger football, Colin Sheffield. Alongside me for his second season as well, head coach Jake Russell. Coach Russell, you're back. You got your first kind of full season under your belt, first full off season really, and now you're back into the swing of things for your second season. How's it feel firstly just to have the kids back on campus, go through camp, and be getting ready for your game on Thursday? Yeah, it kind of hit me <clears throat> there when you said uh, second season. You know, it's uh, it's flown by. I felt like, you know, just yesterday you and I were sitting here doing, um, you know, uh, the show from last season. And uh, just great to have, um, you know, so many guys back. You know, obviously the, the football season really starts in January. Mm. Uh, and we had 108 guys go through our spring, uh, you know, uh, weights and conditioning, spring practice. And that's made all the difference in the world. Uh, we have almost 100 returners uh, heading into fall camp first last year where it was literally the, the opposite. We had about 40 returners and about 110 new guys. This year we had 100 returners and about 45 to 50 new guys. And, and that's been huge. Those guys are setting the standards, setting the culture, um, you know, doing a great job leading and, and just uh, already have that vision and everything that we have as a program. And, uh, the work it takes and all that stuff. But yeah, man, we're excited. Um, you know, uh, that first year is always going to have some of the realities of be it being year one and even with our staff uh, really not getting fully together it, until fall camp last year. This year's fall camp has had a completely different vibe and feel uh, on the staff player wise and everything. So we're really excited. Let's take a quick step back and we'll mm -hmm. look at your first season. Just a little quick recap. You went four and six in your first season, dropped the first two games, a very heartbreaking one against Pikeville, lost in the last, I think, 14 mm -hmm. seconds or so, and then uh, went on the road to Bluefield. It was a very interesting game, a massive stadium uh, that just wasn't quite filled up. Uh, lost that one, but then you got onto a little hot streak. You won four straight games, had some good ones, and then you got into that tough sledding that is the Mid-South Conference, and you got into the powerhouses like Bethel, Lindsay, and Georgetown, who were all basically top ten teams at that time. Yeah, I, I think for most teams in the country, at the end of the season, there's still something left to be desired, right? And uh, definitely last year, you know, we felt like we definitely had a couple more wins minimum uh, out there that we should have had. You mentioned the first game last year. I mean, who knows how uh, the rest of the season looks if you go and win the first game. Um, but uh, there's definitely some of those year one realities of trying to reset a culture, uh, trying to, you know, we were running a new offense and a new defense than anybody out there last year had ran. Uh, you know, some of our staff members were working through their first season together. And so all those things combined, I still think overall is a huge step forward. I think just showing those guys in the program uh, that you can win, that you can compete, even in the games we didn't win. I don't feel like last year that we ever went out and it's just like, hey, you know, they were just a lot better than us. We just can't compete at that level. Uh, and I think our guys pulled out of that season a couple of things. One, we can do this. Two, it's going to take a lot more work, a, a different type of work, a different type of mindset, standard, expectation, all those things uh, to get to where we want to go. We have very high and lofty expectations within our program. We hold our guys to an extremely high standard, our coaching staff to an extremely high standard. And to actually put those on paper and say, we're really going to try to achieve these, then you got to go decide what's it going to take. And I, our guys have really bought into that since January. The new guys coming into fall camp uh, have done a great job, you know, coming straight in, whether they're true freshmen or transfers, and buying in and jumping two feet in really fast. There were some good feeling flips from really the season before you came in and to this season, or your last first season, I guess. Uh, just like Cumberland, Tennessee, you know, lap, the year before you came in, they set – uh, really, a, uh, I think it was a program record high points. And then you all go on the road and you beat a very good Cumberland, Tennessee team. And it's just some moments like that that kind of mm -hmm. feed life back into that program, right? Yeah, I think even from an outsider's point of view, you can see there's some progress being made. Um, like I said, I, I think you could probably see that, okay, they're, they're making strides, um, but it was probably a season where you look and say, okay, we took a step forward. Now what we're trying to do in year two is take a leap forward, you know, several steps forward, because we're trying to go from, 
I tell our team a lot, you're a four and six team. That's what you are on paper. That's what your records say last year. That's how your opponents are gonna gonna perceive you. That's how everybody outside of our program and maybe just the you know very uh, immediate support system that sees practices and things like that. That that's how they see you. And so you know to get over not just one hurdle. You know, we're not just trying to get to a winning team. We're not just trying to get to six and four. We're trying to go win a conference championship, go to the playoffs and compete at the highest level. And um, again, I, I think that just flipped a switch in their minds that said, okay, we realize now what it's gonna take to get there. And, they, and they've done a really great job of accepting that challenge. Let's get to your staff. You mentioned how your staff was kind of coming together. It was a mix of people that had been here at Campbellsville before, uh, some people that came over mm -hmm. from KCU with you, some people from different spots. Um, now that they have a full season working together, we'll get to the new coaches in the next spot. Mm -hmm. But talk about these next coaches coming in, having that full season under their belt, and how that's going for them. Well, I, we did something that's almost impossible in college football. Our whole staff is back. So, uh, you know, I'm just grateful for those guys for deciding to stay. There were multiple coaches on our staffs that turned down great job opportunities to stay because, um, you know, despite me, they really love being on the staff and at the university, but they love our kids. You know, having so many returners, seeing the vision and how special this year can be, uh, I think is why those, a lot of those guys chose to stay um, you know, with the opportunities they had and all those type of things. But yeah, to have your whole staff back is huge. There's just things that even if you're practicing together, going through an off season together, you just can't, you know, build that chemistry as a staff unless you go through those one point losses, uh, those tough losses, those wins, the big wins, the close wins, those really great opponents, the different environments and all the different in-game situations that are you can't sit in an office I mean you can plan for it yeah. but you don't know exactly how you're gonna react uh, how I'm gonna react they need to know how I am as a head coach my strategy my in-game uh, personalities and decision makings and then you know all the coaches combine special teams defense offense all those type of things and now man our staff is so close uh, honestly, we're, we're friends, which is uh, even sometimes unique in the coaching world. Um, but, you know, we've got a really good staff of men that love our kids um, and that really all have a singular vision, which I think is uh, it's really hard to do to get a, now 11 guys all in, moving in the same direction with a singular vision. Do we agree on everything? Of course not, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'll just say that, um, you know, they do a great job of uh, whatever we decide in that office, we go out in the United Front and do and, and show with our guys. And uh, I think that probably more than anything is going to be one of the reasons we really are able to take that leap this season. Well, we're going to step away and take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the upcoming or this past offseason and what that looked like for the Tigers here on Under Center with Jake Russell. Thank you. Welcome back to Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Alongside me still, head coach Jake Russell. Your second season. Now you're not kind of coming in in the spring and having to try to pull players, establish yourself as the head coach, and do all that work. 
you're already the head coach, you've got a season under your belt, and now you go out there. What's this offseason look like as you go out and you try to talk to transfers in the portal, you try to go talk to freshmen, you had a year to recruit. What'd that look like this past offseason? Yeah, uh, going into year one last year, you know, we didn't get the full season. We missed out on the first thing we do uh, from January up until spring practice is our guys are working out. Um, you know, it'd be the, the biggest, hardest, uh, most intense training they do all year for about 10 weeks, January up through uh, March. And then we obviously get into our spring practice, which is huge because, uh, you know, that's where you're actually building the football player. That's where we're actually working on the schematics, um, you know, the small details that we're trying to get our guys to do out on the field every day. But it's also a great time to build that team chemistry, that bond, uh, that true sense of family. And I think that's where we've made some of the biggest strides is it's so cool to see the guys come back now in fall camp. Uh, and it's like they're so happy to see their teammates again. They're so happy to see their brothers. We also have more guys stay this summer than have ever stayed uh, at Campbellsville in the summer. And those guys are choosing to stay working jobs on the side. And we were working out 6 a.m., four days a week all summer. And a minimum had about 10 in there, but at times up to 20 guys in the weight room over the summer. And that's going to make a huge difference. Coach Lane kind of heads up our strength and conditioning program. He used Google Classroom and a check-in system. And I think our guys did a much better job of following the workout program, coming back in great shape. And that's made a huge difference. And obviously, uh, you roll in at the end of July, start your practice August 1, like everybody else in the country. And I, you know, I've said before, but just really feel that we were at a different starting point on August 1, and we were able to just get um, you know, a lot more done early and just kind of really be where we want to be heading, in, heading into the first game. So let's talk about your coaching staff. Mm -hmm. You have all the same people from last season, but you have two new additions. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those two additions. Yeah, actually three new additions, oh, three. Uh, counting Coach Gribbins, who's not new okay. to Campbellsville. Uh, Coach Gribbins, uh, Robbie Gribbins, obviously uh, lives here in Campbellsville, played football here, has been on the coaching staff in the past. He joined us right after the season last year, so you've been seeing him around all spring. Uh, but Coach Gribbins is, is great, man. Energy, uh, loves the kids, does a phenomenal job with the relationship building. Um, helping out with the linebackers right now, uh, but just great juice in the weight room, really gets the guys focused in. Uh, and then our two new additions are our two graduate assistants. Uh, we got Coach Jacob Bryson. He's coaching our uh, H-backs, which is our tight ends, and also our running backs. He's a guy that I had coached with uh, at Union College. He coached my tight ends there when I was the offensive coordinator in 2020. Uh, he's one of the best football minds I've coached with, um, just loves the game. Um, you know, has even as a student at Union really started his coaching career. So he's been coaching a long time, even though he's just graduated and actually just got his master's as well. Um, but he, he does a phenomenal job of uh, being able to take what we want to do offensively. He's a guy that already knew our offense and getting our running backs and tight ends to really buy into it. And honestly, th those were two groups last year that were kind of getting coached by committee. I was working with them some. They were getting put with receivers and O-line some. And now for them to have their own position coach, man, you can just see how excited they are, how bought in they are. That's going to be a huge difference. He's also a great special teams coach, was Union College's special teams coordinator last year. And uh, he's, gonna, he's, he's bringing a lot to that as well. And then uh, secondly, we got Devin Van. Uh, you know, like I've talked about, Coach Lewis as a director of ops is very unique. Coach Van is going to be our director of player personnel and recruiting. And we're probably, you know, I wouldn't even say probably the only uh, team in the country at our level that's going to have somebody full time devoted to player personnel, uh, to the, you know, being a director of recruiting, finding all these little things within our personnel that we can do better. Uh, we're looking into the future. Hey, what are we losing? Where do we need to add? Where can we, you know, build? We think we've got guys that can step in and fill that role, or maybe we need to go and get an immediate impact transfer type guy. Uh, he's worked in the NFL for a couple teams. Uh, he worked at Wake Forest, played his college football at Dayton. Uh, and he's done a great job with some some projects uh, that I've put him on since he's been here. So, man, those guys are invaluable. Now with a full staff of 11 strong, it feels like we've got every, you know, kind of box checked and need met. And honestly, it just continues to take a lot off of my plate, which I'm willing to, you know, push out there so that I can really focus and our staff can really focus on what we, you know, love to do, which is pour into the guys, coach football, uh, and really plan for a great year. 
at the risk of obviously leaving people out because this isn't prepared mm -hmm. or anything, but let's talk about maybe some of the impact transfers mm -hmm. and freshmen just off the top of your head. Yeah, well, the big thing is we, we've got 11 transfers that joined us for this fall, and then I think a couple that joined us mid-year. All of those guys were NAI transfers. That was a strategic strategy that we took. Uh, one, we believe that uh, you know they know the NAI level. All these guys have been key contributors or starters. I think maybe all of them were starters from the previous schools. So you're taking great players from our level and adding them into your program. Right, they also understand the NAI level, uh, and they come to Campbellsville, and, and we're very blessed that Campbellsville is one of the best NAI schools and athletic programs out there, and they say, wow, Coach, this is great. You know, we love it here. There's been some great stories already of guys coming up. Man, Coach, I wish I knew about this place before. Coach, this is the best experience I've had already. Um, and that's, that's going to be huge for us because they're definitely, even in year two, there's some need for some older presence, some guys with game experience, all those things. With the freshman class, you're going to see um, a couple guys on both sides of the ball play for us this year, and that's a great thing. We want to redshirt our freshmen. We've got some guys now that are redshirt freshmen. I think about a Caden Thiemann on offense. I think about a, a Buster Overstreet, one of our offensive linemen offense, that we were able to put in two games last year but preserve the redshirt that are both going to be huge contributors for us this year. Um, and, and so the majority of our freshman class will redshirt, but you're going to see a couple guys on both sides. You're going to see Cam Ward on offense, uh, who's a slot receiver, return guy, uh, unbelievably explosive guy. He's a state champion in track. Uh, he's going to run track at Campbellsville as well, and you're going to see that speed right off the bat. Uh, you're probably going to see a couple freshmen running back get in the mix. And then on defense, you're going to see a couple guys in the secondary. Uh, Caleb Lawrence from uh, South Florida, he's a safety that's just, you know, made everybody's eyes wide real early in camp making plays and, and maybe a couple others over there. But, you know, we're very lucky to be uh, in a position where we're not going to have to run out a dozen freshmen or more. You know, my first year ever as an offensive coordinator, we actually had a few snaps in the year, but we had 11 true freshmen on the field. Uh, we were starting between six and eight every year. And uh, while they were very talented, and some of those ended up being all conference type players, it's just really tough. I mean, so we're going to walk into Thursday's game uh, returning, you know, high teens or, or 20 of our starters from last year and adding in some of these key transfer guys like you mentioned some very talented true freshmen they're going to find their way on the field and just the depth is going to be a difference for us this year well we'll give you one last quick break coach before i grill you on this pikeville game uh, when we come back we'll talk about the upcoming match against the pikeville bears here on under center with jake russell life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome Pre-diabetes does. One in three adults has pre-diabetes, but with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. And you can change the outcome. Take the one minute pre-diabetes risk test today. Go to doihaveprediabetes.org. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's into soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just not the type. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Welcome back to the final segment of the first episode of season two of Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield, alongside me for the third and final segment, Coach, and I promise we'll let you get out of here. It's head coach Jake Russell. Coach, what's it like preparing for the first game of the season? You know, I imagine there's got to be – you can't put too much weight maybe on last season's film because, you know, they've got new guys, they're doing new things, but at the same time, you know, how much stock do you put into what? 
Yeah, the first game is always a little bit of a mystery. Uh, once you get in really past the first couple games, you're, you're going to have uh, several game films from the previous team. You're going to get to see tendencies and percentages and all the things that kind of football nerds and coaches like to get into. Uh, yeah, we've played them the last couple years. Uh, you know, they've got a lot of the same staff as well, which is big for them. Uh, but like you said, personnel changes, uh, year to year, just strategies change. They've also played us the last couple of years, so they've got an expectation of what we're going to do. Uh, and I just really think at the end of the day, the first game, you really try to put all the focus on yourself. Hey, what we've been doing since January, what we've been doing out here on the field since August 1, you really put the focus on you executing. Typically in the first game, you even saw it in week zero last weekend in college football, uh, it, even when the Georgia Tech upset. You know, the things that are going to win the games are just, you know, the team that forces the most turnovers compared to doesn't turn it over, the penalties, getting 11 guys on the field on special teams. All these small things uh, early in the season really make the big difference. By the time you get into conference play, everybody's got the wrinkles ironed out. Um, everybody's feeling pretty good about who they are as a team, their identities and things like that. But the first couple of weeks are always – I always – it's kind of crazy. I enjoy the first game the most every year because you get to see kind of the fruits of the labor and like, hey, are we actually really where we think we could be? You know, the first game last year, we came out and really dominated the first half to three quarters of the game. And I'm like, man, we're so good. And then you kind of get a reality check of like, hey, but maybe we're still not ready to win these type of games. And so I obviously think that's a step we've taken this year. And I'm just excited for our guys to actually go out there and get a play. You got a lot of guys coming back, mm -hmm. too, a lot of impact players coming back. You got guys like Luke Shepherson that led you in receiving last year, 12 touchdowns on the year, had a stretch where I think he had at least one touchdown for like five or six games straight. Uh, Andre Seiler, uh, he only had four touchdowns last year, but 759 yards, that's nothing to sneeze at. And he had actually his biggest game that first game against Pikeville. He had three touchdowns and quite a few yards as well. Yeah, like I mentioned last segment, I think we've got, you know, technically about 20 starters or the 22 back. Uh, we lost uh, Spencer McCown, a really good receiver for us, um, but got a mid-year transfer at the NAI, from the NAI level uh, that's going to fill that role and do a really good job for us. On defense, we really only lost a couple guys that were starting on the D-line uh, here and there, both fought injuries all last year, a couple guys that graduated. And, uh, and again, we've, we've got guys that we were building up, and we've also got a couple transfers in that position. So, yeah, man, we're – we're feeling really good about where we're at with depth and experience and all those things. And, um, you know, like you said, we're returning a very explosive uh, passing offense. And uh, I think what you'll see this year is a more balanced, a more complete offense. And then I just think a lot of the same from the defense, a defense that's flying around, creating pressure, creating turnovers, and a defense that now is getting into really uh, what Coach Ford wants to do in the second year. I promise for Coach Ford I was not going to leave out the defense for too long. I hear Jacoby Miguel is back, and I hear he had a heck of a camp. Yeah, just super happy for Jacoby, a guy that's that's been one of, if not the best players on a defense at Campbellsville, a really good NAI football player. Uh, just really tough injury for the whole team to, to see, obviously for Jacoby to go through more than anybody. And to really just to see him out there in full pads uh, the third day of fall camp. Uh, man, it's just like so everybody's so happy for him and, uh, you know, knew once he got that first hit and those first few plays that he was good to go. But that's a guy that, you know, even at times kind of forgot like, oh, and we get Jacoby back because uh, he was obviously here in our program all year, but just rehabbing a really uh, bad injury that he had. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, he's going to make a big difference. Our line back in core in general, is, is it's got to be one of the best, if not the best and deepest in the country. We've got – probably two or three guys at all four of the linebacker positions that could start anywhere in the country. And it's, it's been a great competition. I mean, there's some guys that um, were all-conference caliber guys last year that have been fighting to keep their spots, and that's what you want. So talk to me a little bit about the game on the road. So mm -hmm. you take your first game of the season to a hostile environment on the road. What's that like? Yeah, just travel in general is just a, a – you know, something that it's got all these steps and you've got all this planning and 
Obviously, big part of the reason why I hired Coach Lewis because I really don't enjoy that stuff, but he mm -hmm. crushes it. Uh, this was a game where it was a little bit of a tweener for the distance of do we stay overnight, uh, do we go day of. I think with the 7 p.m. time slot, you know, going day of, stopping, eating on the way, trying to break up the trip a little bit, getting there in plenty of time. Uh, obviously, night game, the guys love. I always mm -hmm. tell the guys, they're like, Coach, we want more night games. I'm like, you know, when you're married and have kids, <laughs> you want the 12 p.m. Yeah. games. You know, you want to be back on the couch watching college football, hanging out with the family by supper. Um, but the road trips are fun. I, it's something I always enjoyed as a player, getting to go into another stadium, see the facilities, uh, see the town, uh, kind of get away. You know, the, the players will be super excited about missing class on Thursday, mm -hmm. excused absence. And, um, you know, it's just really fun to go into those places and play these good teams in these good environments. And there's just something about, I think, our team that's going to translate really well into the road games this year. What's it like maybe for the freshmen that are coming in their very first year in college football and if they made the travel team, mm -hmm. they now have to kind of pick up on what a travel day is like yeah. for you guys. So what's that kind of like for them in that transition? I think the biggest difference you see from the high school level to college is just the amount of mental preparation that goes in the game. Going out and playing football is the easy part for all these guys, but now it's taken a true freshman who was the star on his team last year and saying, hey, you could possibly be in the game 40 snaps. You could possibly be in five snaps. You're also going to be on two or three special teams, and your assignment on that special teams could be a difference in this game. And that's a lot of pressure for an 18 or 19-year-old kid that this time last year was playing high school football. Um, and and it's, it's all those walkthroughs and the meetings and all these things that most of them probably weren't doing last year that now I think they're starting to realize, oh, everybody here can play football really well, but who can actually buy into these small details, understand the assignment, uh, being coachable, all those little things. And then they'll get a really good taste of kind of college football uh, on the road, the environments that we go into. And then I'm really excited for them to get back home in three weeks and experience our home games for the first time. Well, Coach, best of luck tomorrow, and I uh, can't wait to see you guys out there. Yeah, thank you guys. Excited for the year. The Tigers head on the road for their first game of the 2024 season to take on the Bears of Pikeville. Kickoff is set for 7 o'clock. You can join myself and Khalil Baker on 88.7 The Tiger, as well as on the TuneIn app. Be sure to join us next week for Under Center with Jake Russell.